Hey guys, uh, welcome to another weekly draft video here on the Need to Hone Magic channel. Um, we're doing some more Battle for Zendikar this week. Uh, before the draft gets started, I just want to say my, my videos are also posted on paperchampion.net. Um, if you're watching there, then I'm glad you found this video there. Um, if you're not, you should go check out paperchampion.net for other great Magic the Gathering content. Um, I'll be back with you guys when the uh, first pack opens. All right. <clears throat> The draft is beginning. Ooh, Green Warden of Marasa. That's pretty hard to pass up. I mean, green is considered a pretty weak color, um, but Green Warden's just so good. I mean, it's a six mana, five, four, already decent. And then he get, draws you two cards, basically, um, while he exists. Complete Disregard is also very good. Um, and those are the, probably the two best cards in the pack. But I think I'm going to go with the Green Warden. It is a Mythic, too, which may mean it's worth something. Um, probably not, though. I haven't seen it make any. Let's look, though. I haven't managed to draft one yet, so yeah, it's worth 94 cents. No big thing. Um, so yeah, it's either complete disregard of the Green Warden, and I think I'm going to go with the Green Warden. Um, green will end up being very open, and we'll have basically one of the few reasons to like first pick a green card in our deck. So I think our deck could be pretty strong um, if green is open, like it almost always is. The disregard's tempting, but the Green Warden's just too good to pass, I think, even being green. Okay, here, I think Silent Skimmer is one of the better cards. It's not a very strong pack in general. Coombe Stone Waker is fine. Retreat to Korra Helm is basically unplayable. Blighted Fence, fine. Eyeless Watcher is fine. Goblin War Paint, almost unplayable. Little Mancer's Focus is actually a very good card, but, um, you know, it has to be, you have to have a lot of creatures to make sure it works, and I don't want to take it just yet. Mist Intruders. You know, a pretty good card in the right deck. Natural Connections, basically unplayable, as is Reclaiming Vines. Rush of Ice is all right. Uh, so, I mean, and Voracious Null is basically unplayable. So Silent Skimmer is sadly, you know, probably the best card in this deck. It'll be, it'll get into any deck that has black in it. It's obviously better in a colorless deck, but it's good in any deck. Um, and the Focus is probably the third best, and then Mist Intruder. I mean, second and third best. But yeah, I think I go with the Skimmer here. One of the weaker second picks I think I've ever taken. Okay. Scatter the Winds is pretty good. Um, I haven't had a chance to play it, but, you know, it is a cheap counterspell and one with Awaken that can also turn one of your lands into a threat. Um, it's also a Grove Rumbler, who's good in the right deck. Um, you know, well, and he's good in most decks that happen to be red and green. That is one of the weaker pairs, though. Um... Sludge Crawler is pretty good in basically any deck. Ghostly Sentinel is also pretty good. Uh, but I think I take Scatter here. I mean, we'll, take, we'll have taken three different cards in three different colors, but Scatter to the Winds is pretty good. Um, you don't even really have to be a super controlling deck for it to be good. I mean, uh, if you have a good board presence and you can just hang back and be ready to cast your Scatter, then you're pretty happy. Green has surprisingly not looked super open. Someone else may have opened up uh, another big green rare because um, we're just not seeing much. Ulamog's Nullifier is fine. Um, so that may be where I go here. We are in two of the colors. We could end up in a colorless deck and not even play our Green Warden. Makes me wish I'd taken the Ingest 1-2 guy earlier, but I think I just take the Ulamog's Nullifier here. Um, Rashida Hogger is good in the life gain deck, but not much else. Core Castigator is fine, but you know, we don't want to take a fourth card in a fourth color, especially not one that's just not that good. Um, so yeah, we'll take the nullifier here. See where we end up. But I would like to play the Green Warden. I haven't had a chance to play with him um, in limited anyway. I think I have him in a constructed deck or two that I've been tinkering with. But but you know these the silence the scatter to the winds the Lumog's nullifier and Green Warden are all very good cards. Silent skimmers. You know, above average, but not amazing. The other three cards are definitely better. Blue-green, I wouldn't mind doing. Um, but blue-black is probably a better... Like, if that ends up being open, we'll just have to give up on our green warden because we are not. We haven't seen anything green really worth taking um, other than, like, the Grove Rumbler, maybe. So, And again, there's not really much in green that's exciting here. A latest Courier Griffin, though, is pretty good. Maybe I do go into a fourth color here since we're getting some weird signals. I mean, Oracle's fine. Kozilek Sentinel is good. Titan's Presence is good. But 
Uh, I think the Courier Griffin's probably the best of the cards that are left here. I think that's probably what I take, sadly. I think the Wild is okay. Plummet is a good sideboard card, but um, I'll take the Griffin. Okay, Cryptic Cruiser is pretty good for to be around this late. I think that's what I'll take. Orin Reef Invoker is fine, but I like the Cruiser more. Although, I get, well, do I, though? I mean, if I end up in the green deck, the Orin Reef Invoker is going to be better. Cryptic Cruiser is good, but only if you get some ingesting going on. Otherwise, he's a 4-mana, 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, I guess I'll take the green card, actually. The blue card's not enough better, I don't think, um, for me to take it. I'm not, I haven't been super, super impressed with Cryptic Cruiser. I mean, it's good, but it's... It's harder to pick up creatures with ingest than it is to pick up processors, so it always sucks to have a bunch of processors and then not get the ingest, so that's why I went the route I did. But this has been a weird first pack, definitely. There are signals, like green is almost always open, you know? That's part of the reason I was willing to take the green warden, but it hasn't appeared to be ultra open. All right, we have a Hogra Sharpshooter. A Fertile Thicket, which could potentially enable us to play multiple colors. Um, I think that's probably what I'll take here, because we could just end up in a good stuff kind of deck. Hogger Sharpshooter is fine, but not ultra exciting. I'm going to take the Thicket. Merc Strider is also good, but only if, uh, again, it's a processor and we need ingest. I like to pick up the processors before I pick up ingesters. Okay, another Invoker isn't awful, but Rush of Ice is probably better at this point, um, and it's what I'll take. So we're going to want some fixing. I mean, if we try to, I mean, we probably won't run white. Like if that's the color that we wouldn't run, but we may go blue, black, green, um, which are good card to good cards for converge uh, colors for converge is what I'm trying to say. So we would need some more thickets and stuff like that. Sometimes you can just draft a bunch of thickets and uh, that's enough fixing, you know, but life spring druid obviously would be nicer. Skyline Cascade, Spell Shrivel. I mean, we could go, you know, have a couple counter spells, go like full on control potentially. We do have Green Warden who works well with that strategy. Um, I think it, I think I take the Spell Shrivel here. It also gives us a way to um, exile something for potential ingesters, uh, processors. I mean, we already have one, but he's good even without um, even without being able to use his ability, his processor ability. I mean, we may just end up going blue-black, like, they seem to be decently open. So I'm going to put those over there for now. And that would also mean that goes over there. So, I mean, the blue-black cards we have are good. I mean, our Green Warden's definitely our best card so far, but, you know, we're definitely getting some nice control stuff. Blighted Fen or Rush of Ice. I think I'd rather have the Fen at this point, actually. So that's what I'm going to take. Not, I don't, I don't love Rush of Ice. I mean, it's fine, but it's not ultra exciting. So if we're going to go Control, I mean, we have three cards that say Counter on them. So <laughs> that's pretty, pretty good. If we're going to go Control, we do need to get some big uh, finishers, um, which we don't really have right now. We could just win in the air too, which may be what we want to do. Okay, I'll take a Reclaimer here. I mean, it's the best card of those that are left. Um, by a lot, I think. So, I mean, it is a processor. We do need to pick up some more ingest, but yeah, green. Someone else is all up in green, I guess. So, blue black may be the way to go. I mean, the reclaimer late, um, spell shrivel kind of late are both pretty good indicators. Um, and we do have a nullifier. Definitely need to pick up some ingest late. And I'll take a wave wing elemental here. It's a decent enough card. Um, so is Oracle of Dust, basically in the same family of decent enough. Uh, this is basically a five drop, incidentally. So I guess we can... Not looking like we'll play green. I mean, yeah, it has to be open for it to be good, and it's just not open. So uh, I'll take a Hedron Blade for my sideboard. And I guess I'll take another one. I don't know if I've ever actually sided one in. I'm trying to remember. So these are four drops. These are fives. Angelic Captain, huh? Okay. There is a good green card here, but, you know, it's not enough of a reason to go into it. We also have a Pilgrim's Eye, though, who could enable a potential splash better than most 
things could. Um, there's also a clutch. So it's kind of a hard decision. It's a decision where I have to say whether or not I think I'll be able to play my Green Warden, who unfortunately does cost double green, or if I should just go for the good blue card. Um, yeah, it's hard. I mean, the Pilgrim's Eye, you know, would make us be able to splash green, but we're, we're going to have to do more than splash it if we want to play Green Warden anyway. So I think we go for the clutch. It's true of Life Spring Druid too, but that would force us into green instead of just a, a smaller splash. So, yeah, I'll take the clutch. It's just a very good card. So, okay, spawning bed, a complete disregard next to a Wind Rider Patrol. Both cards I'd love, but I'd rather have the complete disregard. Exile is something, um, and it's one of the better removal spells in the format uh, anyway. So, that's where we're going to go. Okay, Cinder Glade. Not in the colors we want to be in for uh splashing purposes and it's also not worth a whole lot touch of the void is pretty good to still be here um horribly awry i mean that card has ended up being a little better than i thought it would be and maybe if we want to be a straight up control deck that's where we want to go the healer's not going to be good in our deck transgress the mind's only good in constructed really i think i'll go with horribly awry i don't love it um but you know we don't have anything we're doing on turn two right now and it's another ingest and uh, a processor enabler, so I guess that's where I'll go. Now green's looking pretty. I mean, this this is a pretty late life spring druid, so green's looking pretty good all of a sudden. But I think the blue black deck that we're building is better than what green would give us, um, especially if we only go into it this late. Gideon's approach and sheer drop are both here. It means white's probably pretty open, but I actually like Meyer's malice a fair amount. I usually mainboard it, um, and I think I'll do that here. Wouldn't mind picking up a Halimar Tide Collar or two. We do have several good cards with um, Awaken at this point. So don't have a lot of creatures yet, but we do have lots of counter spells and ways to deal with creatures, which isn't too bad. Um, Willowbox Reclaimer is kind of like a crappy Green Warden uh, anyway, I guess. It lets me get back an instant or sorcery, and uh, I have to be able to process something to do it. Um, but whereas Green Warden just does it, um, he's just a really cool card. One of the few very strong green cards in this format. Okay, Evolving Wilds is still here, which I think I take no matter what. And maybe, just maybe, like if we picked up that Pilgrim's Eye, it might have been a real possibility to run green. Um, there's another Invoker who's fine. Um, don't really like Sylvan Scrying and Constructed, but we're definitely taking the Evolving Wilds. I mean, even if you're just two colors, it's... It's nice, um, but I don't know. I mean, I'd love to be able to jam this guy into the deck. Um, maybe we'll just get past the second Evolving Wilds or something like that. We could run like four, four forests or something weird. Okay, we get another dual land, but again, not in our colors. But there's also a Tide Drifter, who's exactly the kind of thing we want in this deck. He slows down the game early, makes our creatures hard to kill. All of our Awakened creatures we have also get pumped by it, so it sort of has some... Not obvious awakened synergy, um, and it's just a good even if it didn't have what it, its ability, it would be a good card. So that's what we're going to take here. Um, so yeah, that's I think where we're going to go. Void attendant, mm, not good enough green card for me to go just go into it now, but I think we'll take a grasp. It's a good removal spell. Well, good's an exaggeration, it's a fine removal spell. This, I guess, is technically a six drop. I mean. Not technically, but a lot of the times I'm going to want to use it as a six drop. So, I mean, if we could make this green warden work, it's too bad we keep seeing dual lands that have green in them, but they don't have either blue or black. They're the we've seen Cinder Glade and we've seen the uh, green white one. So, it's a little sad. Okay, Cloud Manta is probably where we go. Yeah. I don't have a lot of creatures. Most of them have flying, though, so that's good. I guess we're up to eight creatures now, actually, plus all of our awakened cards. Would not mind, you know, the unblockable ingester or the one-two ingester. They would definitely make, like, our reclaimer a lot better. Although complete disregard plus reclaimer is a pretty nice little combo. Um, so is, like, spell shrivel plus reclaimer. So a lot of our all of our cards so far that exile things um, are instants or sorceries, so we can get them back right away, which is nice. 
We still don't have like a really great late finisher at this point. Okay, we could take a Night Watch, who's perfectly fine, but I think I like Blighted Cataract a little more in the kind of deck we're building. So that's what I'll take. Letting us draw cards is pretty good. The Fen's good too. I mean, if we ended up going, if we do end up being able to splash for this, I'll probably would cut the Fen over the Cataract. Cataract, I think, is better. Um, there's too many Eldrazi Scions in this format for Blighted Fen to be like incredible. I mean, it's fine. I would play it in most decks where I'm not. I'm only playing two colors and one of them's black. But if we're trying to make this work, I think that's a better payoff than having a Blighted Fen. The Cataract actually is pseudo fixing in the sense that it can draw us more cards and get us closer to where we want to be. This Rampart would be nice if we were in white, but uh, I guess I'll just take a Coral Helm Guide here. The unexciting pick, but the fine pick. Um, okay, now there's like nothing for us. I guess I'll take a Encircling Fisher away from somebody because it can be a pretty big problem. I've had it be used pretty effectively against me, and I've used it pretty effectively, so... Kind of like a blue-black skies deck, I guess. <laughs> we have lots of flying finishers. I guess right now Wavewing Elemental is our primary finisher. Okay, here I'll take a Giant Mantis. Not a bad sideboard card if we end up in green. I mean, here's a way that could help us fix, but this spell, I think, is just a better sideboard card. So I think that's what we take instead. This is definitely the most counter spells I've managed to jam into a deck in uh, Battle for Zendikar. Uh, I guess I'll take the retreat. It could end up finding a place in our deck. Seems unlikely, but, you know, you never know. All right, we got one pack left. Um, if we picked up that Pilgrim's Eye, I think I would have been able to play my Green Warden, but didn't know I'd see such a late Evolving Wilds. Ooh, Serpentine Spike. Eldrazi Sky Spawner, another Evolving Wild. So we're not going to be able to play the Spike, sadly, or the Rolling Thunder. So there's going to be someone who gets past this who's in red who's like, man, why can't I take both of these? I think we probably just take the Sky Spawner here. Um, the Evolving Wilds is tempting. Um, and maybe it would let us play our Green Warden. What would we have to do? We'd have to run like three Forests, two Evolving Wilds, probably. That's still probably not enough, though, because it's double green. Man, I would need like two Evolving Wilds and or Pilgrim's Eye from this pack to make it work, I think. So yeah, I think I just take the Sky Spawner, sadly. Instead of going for like the more exciting thing, I'll take the like, you know, what I know is a very good card. Okay, Ugin's Insight, also a very good card. There's also an Early Ingester in this pack and a Stasis Snare. Only mentioning the Stasis Snare for how good it is. Uh, this pack is actually very strong. The Ugin's Insight and Stasis Snare are both pretty, pretty strong cards. Stone Fury and Smite are also, you know, relatively high picks. Um, Ugin's Insight. I mean, worst case scenario, it draws me three cards, and usually I'm going to have something in play that'll also let me scry, so I think that's probably what I go with. Adverse Conditions and Incubator Drone are worth considering for our deck, but I think we want Ugin's Insight for this deck. Okay, Gruesome Slaughter. I don't think we quite have the critical mass of creatures we need to make that good. We have one way of gaining life for Bloodbond Vampire. I don't think that's enough. So it's either Incubator Drone or Cloud Manta, basically. Um, hmm. What do we want here? There's also Demon's Grasp, but I think we're probably okay-ish anyway on removal. It's not the strongest removal spell anyway. We might be able to pick up one later. Um, I think I'll take the Drone. I think I like that. Ooh, Halimar Tidecaller we like for our deck a lot, I think. We have to pass another guy with Ingest and a Clutch of Currents, but we already have so many cards in our deck with Awaken that I think Halimar Tidecaller is a definite definite yes. Ooh, Benthic Infiltrator. That's exactly the kind of thing we need. Makes our Ingesting better. Uh, ooh, Skyrider Elf, huh? That is tempting. If we'd picked up two Evolving Wilds, it would really be a good possibility. I may still try to make it work. Spell Shrivel, pretty good, but we already have one, and having more than that like isn't, isn't great. The more you have, the less good they get, basically. I think I will take the Elf on the off chance we find a way to make it work. Um, so, yeah, that's what I'll do. I don't like Salvage Drone, even though it has Ingest. It's just not the best. Uh, and, ooh, Coastal Discovery this late, along with a 
tightening coils, like, and another calling drone. Uh, Blue Black ended up being very open, but it's like at times maddening. Uh, Ruin Processor is also very good. Like, this pack has four cards that are pretty good for a deck, and Coastal Discovery and Ruin Processor are probably the best. I think I go for the Discovery. I, it's just too good. Like, the card draw is great. Um, I mean, to be fair, we don't have a great finisher at this point, but we do have a lot of flyers, um, and that's a finisher in itself. So I think we take Coastal Discovery here. Okay, good. We got Pass the Tightening Coils, which I will happily take. Um, do I want the Night Watch or the Geyser Field Stalker? This Hagra's Retreat to Hagra is probably not making it. Um, yeah, it's kind of a hard choice. I guess the Night Watch, even though it doesn't have Menace, it is just a bigger creature that's harder. You know, there's less removal that can kill it. I did pass up a lot of fixing. We could have ended up, probably if I'd taken every piece of fixing, playing both Green Warden and Skyrider Elf in this deck, but I don't think it's going to happen. Okay, Adverse Conditions or Incubator Drone. I think we want the conditions uh, for this deck. It can slow your opponent down. It can also help us swing for lethal with our flyers and stuff like that. So I'll take it. I think we have a decent number of ways of exiling things. You know, I, I think I'm okay with that. Okay, Skyline Cascade, I think we do want more than a Cloud Manta. Um, at this point, uh, if I knew I was going to get that, we will take a Culling Drone happily, though, this late. And we'll take a Dispel for the sideboard. So picked up another Ingester, which is good for us. Yeah, Blue and Black ended up, it's one of those things where it ended up being so open. I guess I'll take a Salvage Drone. It's not an awful card to side in against creatures with opponent, like an ally opponent with lots of one-toughness creatures um, where it can easily trade and maybe even adjust something. So it's going to take some trimming here. Probably don't end up playing the Night Watch. We didn't get a Ruin Processor in the end, which is kind of sad, I think. Um, we're going to be trying to win with basically awakened cards awakened lands and stuff like that we don't have any like amazing finishers um so i think we probably play all four of these both our blighted lands um and the skyline cascade let me put the here um yeah that was a weird draft green was not open um as it usually is. Uh, so that was strange. Um, so what do we want to cut here? That is a good question. Uh, I mean, I think probably Coral Helm guy, you know, it's it doesn't have any like sy legitimate synergies with their deck. And it's our, most of our finishers can't be blocked, you know, except by flyers anyway, at least, either. So, the Night Watch might get cut, although it's a good sideboard card. Um, so we need to cut three more cards here. I guess Skyrider Elf. He's just going to complicate things, you know, and strain our mana base. Um, horribly Awry might be it. I like Spell Shrivel more than I like Horribly Awry. But let's let's see how many ways we have of exiling things and how many processors we have before those exile, this exiles, that exiles. That's it, really, other than uh, also that. We only have five ways to exile, unless I'm missing one here. So, like, for me, that means I kind of need all of them if I want to get the most value out of, like, my Reclaimer and my Oracle of Dust, and my uh, Ulamog's Nullifier, like if I want them to be at their best. I mean, the creatures definitely stay in because they're repeatable sources, and Complete Disregard definitely stays in. So it's down to, like, these two cards. I could potentially cut one of them. Um, I may move Myers Malice to the sideboard just because our deck ended up being pretty pretty deep. It is a good sideboard card against anything that's not a very fast deck, I think. Um, so... 
Yeah, I mean, that does take away one of our cards with Awaken, which makes our Halimar... Every one we have makes Halimar Tidecaller a little bit better, but we still have a lot. I mean, a decent number of them, at least. So we need to cut one more card. It might just be Oracle of Dust. I think it is. It's just not the most exciting uh, of uh, cards. I mean, it's another card that's okay to side in against certain decks, especially decks that aren't very fast. Okay, so let's take a look at what this really costs. Uh, like, we have Rush of Ice and Clutch of Currents at 5, basically, at least when they're at their best, and Coastal Discovery at 6. Um, and Scatter to the Winds. That one can stay at 3, but... Yeah, I think that's basically our deck. I guess Black in the end wasn't ultra open, um, although these late culling drones are kind of crazy. I mean, we only got one of them, but we saw two pretty late. So... Yeah, I think that's our deck. Um, we do have cards like Salvage Drone and Oracle of Dust and Myers Malice that are good to side in against certain opponents, mostly against, like, Salvage Drone's best against really aggressive opponents, and Oracle and Myers Malice are best against uh, the slower ones. Um, so, yeah, we'll bring in our lands. We already have one blue source. Well, basically two blue sources and one, uh, yeah, two blue sources one black and we don't need a lot more in the way of black i don't think yeah i don't know about that little amount of it um i'd probably go to nine five no uh, probably still not quite probably more like eight six yeah that seems reasonable we do have both Blighted Lands in our colors, so that's pretty cool. Too bad, I mean, we first picked this Green Warden hoping green would be open, but, you know, if we'd forced it, it would have ended, we would have ended up with a pretty bad deck, I think. We occasionally saw some good green cards late, but we never saw, like, the late Brood Monitor or War Caller, which are, like, the big indicators that green's open. Um, blue was very open, obviously, and, and black was open enough, I guess. Uh, I could probably have gone into some different second color. Like, maybe even going with green in the end would have been better since we picked up a Skyrider Elf and Green Warden. Um, but now that we have, you know, two of, two of our removal spells, one of which is very good is in black and, uh, yeah. So we ended up very blue. I mean, maybe I should entertain the idea of going green instead. Now that I'm thinking about this, um, what do we lose if we, if we go green instead? We lose a lot of removal, but we gain in power level. Uh, yeah, I guess, I guess I would play this. And I'd probably play that and this. So, hmm, <laughs> this is interesting. Because this would allow us to run our Green Warden, who's very strong. But we would lose, the problem is we'd lose two of our, like, real removal spells. we just hold on to Tightening Coils and the Bounce and the Tap Down spells. So I don't think we can do it. It's tempting, though. Maybe I could side into it at some point against an opponent who just doesn't play a lot of creatures or something. And I don't need the removal. <laughs> Seems unlikely, though. I think our, like, the power of these cards is probably higher. Um, but the synergy we get from playing these other colorless cards and a card with ingest and removal that exiles things is probably more. What did I end up cutting? I should have one more card. Oh, that. That's what. And Ulamog's Nullifier is pretty strong, too. Uh, even if you can't hit the flash. I mean... Not the flash, the the processor cost, but the green warden's definitely better, but just not worth it, I don't think. So, although it may be worth it for Skyrider Elf now, now that I've seen like how little black I have in my deck, like I could easily cut one swamp and one island and run two forests. Yeah, I think I feel okay about that. Oh, but we have we need to cut something for skyrider elf to come in it does give us another good flyer maybe adverse conditions i mean it can move to the sideboard i think yeah yeah although incubator drone also in this deck where we're mostly going to want to be swinging in the sky but yeah i think that'll do it all right that was a rather long deck building because the draft ended up being so weird <laughs> where we thought we were going to be green early and then we went sort of black, but we kind of, kind of 
probably should have picked a different second color based on the number of playable black cards I ended up.